Let's talk about that love surge from last week and all the crazy transformational energies that have been occurring. This is gonna be a very deep conversation this week. I ask for your patience and I really ask that you'll just hang with me. So let's get into it for the week beginning February 3rd, 2020. Hello everyone, it's Michelle Patterson here with Angel Souls and this is our weekly angelic message for the week beginning February 3rd, 2020. I will be getting into a channeled message here uh, and I will be talking about some heavier things towards the end of the video if you would like to hang out with me. Until that point, of course, I will share with you uh, everything that's been going on. But first and foremost, I want to do like a little recap of last week's message because it was all about love surge and... Um, having our hearts opening. And I know I experienced that myself, but there was also a lot of huge transformational energy and some of that love surge coming through from a collective mourning. Okay. So, which then in turn opens our hearts. I don't know about any of you out there who are sensitive. My ears have been ringing like crazy for days, for days, like to the point where I can't really hear anything. Um, and I keep, especially as I'm doing personal readings with people, like I'll go deaf in one ear and then the you know, high ringing buzz comes in. Now, of course, if you're experiencing that, as always, check with the doctor, make sure nothing seriously physical is going on with me, with you. But um, I almost said with me, maybe I should go <laughs> to the doctor, but um, that can be a very intense download coming in for certain and transforming, lighting up your, the cells of your being, if you want to see it that way. All right, again, I'm going to get into a channel message for this coming week, but I felt like we needed to recap that a little bit. Comment down below how your previous week went. Did you feel a lot of love? I know um, I felt a lot of love, but I felt a lot of love from my spiritual team. Uh, they were kind of coddling me and um, not coddling, maybe that's not the right word, but kind of, you know, just really kind of like holding me. And I didn't feel any foreboding or anything like that. But again, I'm going to get into those stories towards the end of the video. But I did feel a lot of love. What also happened, though, uh, last week was where I saw, and it became abundantly apparent, where the false love was. Where the false love was. And very strangely, even from other YouTubers, I started to you know click on their videos randomly and they would have messages and it was very serendipitous and very free-flowing and yet i'm hearing right now for this coming week we're going to understand how we're breaking the chains okay so breaking the chains i'm going to go into it right now if you're new to my channel this might seem a little weird just hang with me it's all good but let's all just be in a good <laughs> heartfelt space right now i'm going to close my eyes i'm going to channel a message from the angels and we always ask that there is protection for us as we do this and that only messages from the purest source of light come through me and to you okay so let's get into it here Breaking the chains may not look the way we thought it would. It, there's still an element of surprise going on here as we change and pivot and make turns. It's it's like, um, you know, I, I know somebody in my life who they were just on a career high. And then all of a sudden there was some news about their job. Um, my channel was like soaring. And then the past couple of days, it's just staying steady. Um and everything kind of got quiet. It might be because the energies are surrounding this right now. But uh, the breaking the chains, this is really getting us to look at, hold on. So things come up in a surprising way. We have to recap that. So things are coming up in a surprising way, but they are, in a, it's, it's like a shock, but it's a gentle shock. I know that doesn't make any sense whatsoever. <laughs> That's contradictory, but um, it's sort of a, oh, and then, okay, I see the wisdom behind it oh, all right, well, yeah, okay. I just had a shock with some people who I thought were caring, loving people. And I discovered they weren't. And it was like, uh, oh, <laughs> it's, it's very much a time here, I'm feeling, where we look back on situations and go, all the red flags were there. All the red flags were there. This is where we go back and start looking at things that we didn't want to see before, right? 
but ultimately it's leading us to a truth and that's the good thing right it's leading us to a truth so it can be a little bit of, of discomfort coming in this next week but it's not it's not a bad thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, I know discomfort is not, it's not good. It can be very draining, all those things. But um, ultimately, it's getting us to move forward. And so, uh, yeah, they're giving me another example. Again, this is kind of a heavy example, so I won't go too far into it. But there was an incident and here in Colorado, Colorado Springs, and the sheriff's department went live. And all these people are in there putting these like horrible things on Facebook, these horrible comments. And it occurred to me, I'm like, oh my God, th this is what we are contending with. My face, when I channel, I start to feel tingly and it's just kind of annoying. So if I'm, I'm sorry if I'm touching my face a lot, um, it's just like itchy. Like, you know, when you're getting ready to sneeze, but it doesn't happen. Yeah, that right there. <laughs> right? Um, so anyway, so there was this incident and people were being so negative about it and so um mm -hmm. they're saying watch your quantum force fields watch what you're putting out there in this particular example i felt myself going oh my gosh you know, we it's almost like we have to counter the negativity and i don't want that to be a battle do you i you know i i really am hoping that part of the breaking the chains for some people will be catching how you're thinking right because those thought forms go out and even if you don't act on them, it's going to come to fruition in one way or another, right? Or those thought forms can go out and they form a collective bubble, if you want to see it that way. And then all it takes is for one person whose wiring got a little snipped along the way to suck in all that negative uh, thought form. And it seems like a good idea to go out and do terrible things, right? So this is a huge lesson for us to be very, very careful about what we're putting out there. And, you know, as, as we see people transforming, as we're transforming our own lives, as things never look the same, I mean, we're just in January. <laughs> we are just in January and we have so many things that have occurred. And it's not even just on a national or international level, but uh, also for individuals. For some of us, we're trying to find our sense of self again. And this might, in this week, remember, time's not actually linear, so you could always go back and look at any of the videos that you are pulled to. But um, when, the way I approach the weekly message, it's like, okay, this is the time where people can hear this. Doesn't necessarily mean that it's only going to happen in that week. It's just now's the time to talk about it, right? To be aware of it. Um, so it's like we're trying to find our way back to our authentic selves, which, you know, that's been a journey I think that everybody goes through in their lives. Uh, learning to forgive, learning to look at the positive and not, you know, and I don't mean that in like a spiritual escapism kind of way, but looking at the positive as uh, a part of your being. You know, we're not victim of our circumstances. There's a part of us we can always tap back into. I always talk about don't let anything steal your joy. And that's hard, isn't it? When someone breaks your heart when you thought they were something and then they're not, or something very unexpected happens that you have no control over. There's nothing you could have done. It's very disheartening. And it's hard to say, okay, well, I'm gonna find my joy. This week, stay level. Stay as level as you can. Hold space for yourself. Hold space for others. All right, and we will be seeing this breaking of chains in one way or another. And it's probably not going to be the way that most people immediately start thinking because we're operating still from our duality consciousness or third dimensional ego consciousness. So people might go, oh, breaking the chains uh, means, I don't know, like something that's been bothering you, oh, that finally works in my favor. That's not how life works, okay? If something's not working out for you, it doesn't mean that you're a victim. It might mean that it's time to turn in a different direction. I have to say I woke up today in a certain space and I went, why am I in Colorado Springs? Ever since I moved here, I put on 40 pounds. I, my debt has gotten worse and worse. Um, you know, my business immediately, the moment I got to Colorado Springs, my business started to slow down recently. It started picking up again, but I mean, all the signs are there that I probably shouldn't be here. 
And then the breaking of the chains was like, okay, if I can accept that, if I can get into the actual honest energy of accepting that, what then do I do? Where do I go from here? What does that look like, right? Now that doesn't mean I'm gonna move out of Colorado Springs. I don't know, that seems pretty exhausting right now, but that's my ego consciousness saying that. And so I'm really having to stay open and in the flow to see where I need to go next. That is the kind of thing I think we are all contending with. You know, it, I, I'm getting the message too, like if some of you thought you wanted uh, a certain thing with a certain person, maybe you're realizing that's not it. Or you thought you wanted to live a certain lifestyle and oh no, that, you know what, it doesn't match up. I, I don't know, it's, something's not adding up here. And that's what this week is. Something's just not adding up, but we're also being asked to just hang tight until more information comes in. Okay, so it's not exactly a holding pattern. I wouldn't say that, um, but I think there is some ele element here of having to be patient. <laughs> okay, just having to be patient. So let's get on to the cards here and keep my hair back away from the microphone. All right, so we have the crystal cards here. I really just wanted the same old, same old cards <laughs> for this week. Um, feels comforting, so. Here I am shuffling, shuffling for the week of February 3rd, 2020. Please again, comment down below. I do have a great community here. I wanna give a little announcement here. A long time ago, I started this um, group on, it was like Angel Souls Love Awareness on Facebook. And it was only supposed to be up for three months, but people kept wanting to go in there and go in there. I'm not keeping that active. I only really keep that open so people, so you guys can talk to one another. That was only supposed to be up for three months. Um, so f feel free to go in there, but it might take a minute for me to approve everybody to get in there. I know that's weird, but again, that was only supposed to be a project for three months. And honestly, I keep forgetting about it. So if you're like, Michelle, why aren't you posting in love awareness? I'm kind of stepping back from Facebook entirely. Uh, <laughs> we won't go into that, um, but I'm stepping back from Facebook. It's still there. Um, I'll still post things every once in a while, but I need a break from Facebook and the kind of energy that collects there. I just... Pfft. You know, if you're somebody who's really into Facebook, no offense against you, it's not you, it's just, I don't need to burden you with all the stories, but <laughs> suffice it to say, I just need a break from it. So please try to be patient if you can. Again, I am of course still doing personal readings. Uh, if you would like to get one, please make sure that you read what you're getting, right? And how it goes, the wait time, all that good stuff. And also I have a video here on my channel uh, and it's called How I Approach Personal Reading. So you can go watch that as well. So go to angelsouls444.com to get a personal reading or get in line for a personal reading if you would like. Of course, uh, I have courses at Gumroad, still at Teachable. There's still some over there. And uh, what else? Oh, and thank you to my Patreon supporters. All that information is down below if you would like to support me on Patreon as well. All right, I think that's all the announcements, right? <laughs> all right, let's get some cards. What do we have going on here? Okay, I got Fairy Stone, Fertility, but then I heard Love Force again. And they're really wanting us through these changing times to really pay attention to how we put love into things. Or conversely, how do people shun love? How do they shun love? I've been really getting examples of this where if you are a person who is warm, kind, caring, loyal, you're, you're good for your word, uh, people, they're, they're, we're going to see more of this. There are people out there with this wiring where they see that as clingy and needy. <laughs> I, I'll give you a perfect example. Uh, there was somebody that I was forming a friendship with and we actually hadn't talked in a couple of weeks and I was like, hey, how's your 2020 going? Oh my gosh, this is too much. Do you have me confused with somebody else? Because we haven't talked in like three weeks. I don't, <laughs> what do you mean clingy? What is that? So there's some kind of, I don't know what it is. We don't have to get super deep and esoteric about this, I suppose. But like there is something going on here, okay? There is some sort of uh, smoky something permeating. Please make sure you're not falling victim to that. Keep your hearts open, all right? We, we don't have to fall into that. So we have fairy stone fertility. Now, this can mean being fertile with ideas uh, or just um, it's gestation. It's a period where mm -hmm, it's a period where something needs time to grow. 
okay? And so your ideas need time to grow. Uh, solutions need time to grow. For some of you, you might feel a little bit of stuck energy this week. And I ask you to just, I'm right there with you, okay? I ask you to just try to be as patient as you can be. There are two cards wanting to come out here. So let's see what's going on here. Um, yeah, flexibility. Oh, that's so funny. One was sticking out of the deck and the other one I felt needed to come out. So here's Brazilianite flexibility. Uh, try not to get yourself into the, the lower space, okay? Keep it level. Keep it level and you'll keep it high. You'll be able to go up from there no matter what comes into your existence. But uh, be flexible in your heart and in the healing of your heart. All right. And with that came Lapis Lazuli Past Life. I'm shedding. Um, <laughs> past Life. So, and yes, this matches my shirt and I have this whole little thing going on here, right? Um, so this Past Life. Now, we could get into a deep discussion about this. I don't feel like today's the day to talk about this. This is more about following your instincts, your intuition, and understanding how to take one step at a time. Stay focused. Take one step at a time. And yes, there could be some past life issues that you're trying to work through or uh, some quantum timelines. <laughs> I feel so fancy saying that. Some quantum timelines that you're trying to work through. So bear that in mind as well. Okay. And then we have Baji Stone's Balance. This is Archangel Sandalfin kind of energy. And yes, work with uh, Archangel Michael as well. And as I say, you know, work with these Archangels. I know a lot of people out there have this perspective of, you know, oh, if you work with this angel, they'll save you. Um, they're guiding you, okay? You have to be the one to put things into action. So this is Archangel Sandalfin remaining grounded, balanced between your spiritual self and your physical self. And if we do that, I want to get one more card out of here. Hmm. Hematite grounding. So this is very protective. Again, grounding. The Baji Stone's grounding. Archangel Sandalfin, grounding. Archangel Michael, protection. That doesn't mean you're going to be in danger. It just means that the birthing is happening. The birthing is happening. And we've had the labor pains for so long, right? And now here we are. And so if you're not careful, if you don't take a moment to breathe, to do your breath work, to be meditating, to be opening your heart space, making sure you're intellect and your heart brain right are online with one another then you know you might actually experience quite a wobble quite a wobble all right so there's that let me sorry i I'm, i just put my table like way too far away <laughs> jeez we're working on it here right we'll get to it we'll we'll get it all worked out it'll be fine so let's get our color card. And then, as I said, I will discuss a few heavier things if you don't want to stay for that. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for subscribing and sharing my videos and making sure your notification bell is turned on. Um, thank you so much. And I appreciate it. All right. Love will come, but first there is the lesson. So there's some discovery and a lot of things being discovered. All right, so, oh God. Okay, it's white. The card says white, lighten up. The number is 24, but these are, well, I'll put the B-roll in here, but these are angel feathers on here. And this is talking about transformation. I have been working with Archangel Osriel because I, you know, again, I'm going to explain that here in a minute. But um, this is definitely angelic forces, Again, that sounds so crazy, the angelic presence, you know, coming in and trying to get us to see a different way. They're trying to get us to understand our truest nature. That way we can create that fertility stone, right? Create from a different place. We're clearing away the old um, and, and trying to get ourselves into that, that centered place. So Lighten Up is talking about taking this different approach, um, but always, always be working back towards the light. So a lot of angelic communication this week, guys, a lot of meditating. Don't let your egos get involved. I cannot tell you how often I get emails from people who just treat my inbox like it's a place for their musings. Um, and I don't even know what they're talking about half the time. <laughs> That's where that grounding comes in. Where's that card? Yeah, right here. Right here, all this like, yeah, you want to be perfectly balanced. Oh, 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 there's a story, y'all. So we want to be perfectly I have it upside down. Perfectly balanced, right? By being grounded in our spirituality. 
okay? So being very, very grounded about communicating with angels. And remember, all the guidance that they give you, it still has to filter through you as a physical being and come into this realm, okay? So there's the card portion. If this is where we part ways, thank you again so much for being here. My love to you, to everybody out there. Um, but now I'm going to discuss a little bit about what's been going on. So last night I was trying to collect my thoughts and um, quite weirdly, I, like I wouldn't normally wear this flannel or this shirt together, number one, um, nor would I wear it on camera. This is like my cozy bumming around my apartment <laughs> shirt. And for some reason it just popped in my mind, you know, pay a little tribute by wearing Lakers colors. And um, again, I was uh, trying to collect my thoughts about how to discuss the incident from last week not even a week ago, last Sunday. Uh, I'm recording this on January 31st, 2020, which is now my new schedule. So uh, every Friday, then posting on Saturday morning and sitting on live chat. So the video is not live, but I sit on live chat with you. Uh, so as I was getting prepared and collecting my thoughts, I got a phone call from my mother last night that my uncle had passed away. Now, he had been up and down, up and down. They didn't let me know that he was starting to go because he's been in this position before and we all freak out and he bounces back right so that news came in last night what makes this extra heavy is that it's it's kind of weird um I, I just lost another uncle back in october uh and he had alzheimer's the uncle that we lost last night dementia and he was intellectually disabled. He had a very rough life. Um, people in my hometown of Tiffin, Ohio, used to make fun of him all the time. Um, people took advantage of him. He found himself constantly, uh, oh, I don't, I don't need to get into it. It's, it's a sad thing. It's a very sad thing. But people just judging him and uh, trying to make trouble for him at every turn. And finally... His dementia got to be too much. He ended up in a nursing home and he finally decided to cross over last night. Um, and I want to give a very special thank you to the hospice workers that, of course, helped him cross over very comfortably. But to every hospice worker out there and every person who helps someone who is sick or elderly or in some other way that needs extra care, uh, but especially end of life care. Thank you so much for doing that work. It's it's imperative. It really is. So I'm staying level. Um, still waiting to hear from my family whether they. I want to fly home, but this may. I don't know what the arrangements are. It may happen so fast. I may not even make it home in time. But I'm you know in touch with my family about that right now. But I'm just staying level. Thank God I do the work that I do because this has been such a huge comfort. <laughs> um, and I'm very happy for my uncle. I really am. And I was happy for my other uncle who passed away in October. Um, they were, I don't know what their experiences were. I couldn't possibly begin to imagine, but I know that they're free. As a matter of fact, I feel like my uncle that passed away last night, like he's out of here. Usually they hang around for a little bit. Um, I have this very distinct feeling like he's like, peace, I'm out. Like, you guys, you do your thing. I'm out. Like, I've already paid my dues here. I'm, I'm on from this story. So bless my uncle and uh, bless my family. I, I love them so much. And I know that this is going to take a little bit to process. But we'll get there. We'll get there. On a more grander scale the mourning and the grief on a grander scale. Let's talk about it. So as I said, I'm now starting to record the weeklies on Fridays and get them edited and I load them so I can have live chat on Saturday morning with everybody with a cup of coffee, you know, the whole bit. And I did the same thing last week. And that's when I recorded the love surge video. And I did, I felt like there's just like this outpouring of love. Sunday morning, I, you know, was catching up on personal readings. I was just finishing those up and KRDO here in Colorado Springs, a notification popped up on my phone and I saw it and I was like, oh my God, oh my God. And I'm opening the article and they, at the time they were reporting that there were five other people 
we now know that there were nine people in total on that helicopter, but um, that there were five people there. And my, I like immediately saw the word family go through my head. And me being human, I thought, oh no, was his whole family on there with him? Oh my God. And I just kept feeling family, family. And I thought this story was going to get so much worse. I couldn't help it. I couldn't help it. Like I felt it. It was very negative. It was shocking, terrible, all of that. I know you know that. Um, I messaged my sister and she wrote me back immediately. And she was like, yeah, I just saw that. A little bit later, my my sister came back to me and said his daughter was on there and she was only 13. And then it was coming out that there were nine people and turns out that there were, you know, a few families on there and a wife and coach and the pilot and, you know, parents and their kids and these young girls that who knows if they could have ever changed the face of not just women's sports, but, you know, really, really altered things for us in a big way. Um, Kobe, let me tell you about Kobe, okay? Never got to meet him. <laughs> I lived in LA in my early 20s and there's just something about him. I'm not a sports fan, y'all. I'm not even a sports fan unless I'm dating, you know, an NBA star. I don't think I'm going to really care that much, right? <laughs> like, but um, Kobe, I knew Kobe, not personally, but Kobe went into the NBA right out of high school and I was two years older than, than Kobe. And here I am, I'm 19 about 19 when he's going into the NBA. And I felt like such a loser. I'm like, man, he's 17 and go, <laughs> I need to get my life together. This is crazy. Uh, and I just remember for some reason, maybe I'm having my own personal Mandela effect because Kobe was six and a half feet tall or something like that. But for some reason in my head, I remember him being the young short kid coming into basketball. Am I wrong on that? Sports fans comment down below. Maybe I got him confused with somebody else, but I just remember definitely him you know, coming right out of high school and going into uh, the NBA and being very inspired by that. And, uh, you know, when he ended up retiring, yeah, he has his stuff that has happened in the past and all of that. But I was really interested to see how 40 was going to change him and how he was going to carry forward. And he's just so madly uh, enamored with his daughters and, you know, lifting them up and coaching them and, you know, coaching other kids. And I really, I thought that was so fascinating to see him, you know, this, this huge star, this NBA legend going out and doing this now. And he was writing and, you know, doing, I think there was a short film, a short animated film he had done. He got an Oscar for it. I mean, these crazy, crazy things. I was really looking forward to seeing what he produced in this world and also what Gianna was going to do in this world. So many families, as we already know, you know, there are parents without their kids now. There are kids without their parents. The grandparents, the aunts and uncles that lost a sibling, you know, young siblings that lost their siblings. Like, uh, a man who lost his wife. And I just, it's exactly what you would think. I don't get it. I don't, I wish I had the answers. I don't. Um, I know there are going to be a lot of readers out there probably tune into this situation, but I think it's more important to hold love. That's the love search. To hold love for everybody who is going through the unimaginable and um for what little it's worth maybe i don't know my love to every single person that was in that helicopter we're going to talk about soul contracts here in a second everybody who was in that helicopter and for what they must have experienced and for everybody who was touched by that situation especially the families but also the fans, the people who looked up to Kobe, you know, I mean, this, this rocked Los Angeles, this rocked Los Angeles. And I used to be there, you know, Los Angeles is a little bit in my blood. New York City is more in my blood, but LA was, you know, my first trying to be an adult kind of moment <laughs> in my haunted apartment, remember? Um, <laughs> but, you know, and especially to the current Lakers and, 
every other player that played with him or played on the court with him or, you know, anybody who knew him. Those kids that now don't have their coach. This was big. This was big. But I couldn't help but think how strong that sole contract must have been for, and I'm not saying, because I, here's the thing. I don't have all the answers, of course. Yes, we have a soul's contract, right? But there was something about this that just really felt like it wasn't supposed to happen. Um, but maybe that's me and my ego consciousness going, no, that just left a giant hole. Like Kobe was about to do so many things. Uh, these beautiful people that were on that helicopter with him, they were doing great things. You know, let's admit, like a coach is basically like a second parent. I mean, kids look up to their coaches and gone. But if it were in their soul's contract, I mean, think about those parents that were there with their children to cross over with them. That's major. That's major. And I don't, I don't mean to go so deep with it, but, um, I, that was definitely on my mind and I get too emotionally attached to things. I can't really connect to it too much and it's not my business to do so. Um, but I did also have a lot of time to process this over the last few days. And as an empathetic person, as an empath, and as a witness in this world, um, I just saw the immense pain. Like I know I was feeling it and I never knew the guy personally and I felt it. Uh, and I just saw what it was doing, especially to the fans and especially to the kids. Um, we need to hold space for them. We need to hold space in our hearts for that. I know you already have been, but you know, but the last thing I want to talk about was this whole idea, this spiritual concept. It's not a concept, but <laughs> this thing that we all talk about, about being one, that we're all one. And I know that brought me a little bit of comfort knowing we are Kobe and Kobe is us and we are Gianna and Gianna is us and every single person, I mean, on that helicopter and every fan and, you know, every NBA player and every person that was touched by this situation, we're all one and we're connected. And so we can access that part at any time, right? Mamba mentality. <laughs> so I don't know. I just kind of wanted to get on here, um, offer my love, offer my support to anybody who might be seeing this, who was really affected by that, especially anybody who, who you know, I don't know, but may have been really close to Kobe even. Um, we're here and we'll hold you because you are us and we are you. So if everyone can just remember that, um, if it resonates for you, if you're listening to this and you're like, that's a bunch of hooey, I can't even believe I just sat here through this whole thing. I understand. <laughs> I'm maybe not being very articulate today, um, doing my best here, but a lot of love to everybody in every way. And we are one. Have a good week, guys. Take care. <laughs>